Think of the most incredible feats in your favorite sci-fi stories. Superhuman strength, rapid healing, enhanced intelligence. Now what if I told you these aren't just fantasies anymore? Welcome to the frontier of molecular bioenhancement. The breakthroughs happening today could redefine what it means to be human, offering enhancements that were once the stuff of legends. This is quietly happening right now, and it's set to change everything. My name is Brennan Henry, a former engineer at Philips. I was part of the design team for the trilogy ventilators that are widely used in hospitals today. My career has always intersected with cutting-edge technology, leading me into fascinating conversations about the future of medicine and human capabilities. During one such conversation, I met an inventor who developed a device that could be implanted into the diaphragm to generate electrical voltage with every breath, a breakthrough that could revolutionize human longevity and prevent the need for recurrent surgeries. Currently, in the medical world, when someone has issues that could stop their heart, we use pacemakers that are powered by batteries. These batteries only last five to 10 years, which means after a while, the person requires another surgical procedure to take out the pacemaker, replace the battery, and sew them back up again. And people who have severe spinal cord pain due to nerve damage often have an implantable spinal cord stimulator, which sends an electrical pulse to the spinal cord to relieve pain. But this device uses an implanted pulse generator, which requires a new battery every two to five years, which means another invasive surgery. With every new surgery, there are risks and the creation of new scar tissue, which is permanently weaker than normal tissue. But with this new device, every time the person breathed, they would generate electrical voltage to keep their pacemaker charged for their entire life, without needing invasive surgery or a replacement ever again. Sometime after this encounter, I had my eyes open to another revolutionary advancement in human capabilities, peptides. All of those incredible feats from your favorite sci-fi stories we mentioned before, like superhuman strength, rapid healing, and enhanced intelligence, well, even if those changes don't happen within seconds like you're watching a Marvel movie, the reality is that peptides give us these exact capabilities, and more. Right now we have the ability to reverse aging, optimize hormones, enhance neurotransmitter balance, regenerate organs, and even reverse the damage from diseases believed to be incurable by Western medicine, such as Alzheimer's disease. In fact, peptides are so powerful that many of their benefits are believed to be impossible by Western scientists and doctors. I quickly realized that much of this knowledge was being overlooked and even suppressed by mainstream experts. For example, did you know that the revolutionary capabilities of peptides was first discovered in the USSR in the 1960s? Yet as recently as 2021, scientists in Germany released a study where they believe they made a new discovery about the potential for naturally derived short-chain peptides to enhance human biology. It turns out the vast majority of the planet has been in the dark about the power of peptides. Misinformation about peptides is rampant and tends to spread like wildfire by people who just quote others wrong information as official sources. On my channel, I've made several videos working tirelessly to combat this misinformation because it doesn't just risk suboptimal results, it can also cause real harm, and I can't let this happen. The truth is, peptides can't be patented by Big Pharma. If they could, I believe we'd be hearing about them endlessly for their revolutionary capabilities and almost everyone in the developed world would be hearing about them on the news and through social media. Imagine having the ability to regenerate spines lost on synapses from Alzheimer's and Huntington's, allowing us to restore cognitive function in neurodegenerative diseases previously thought to be irreversible. Imagine activating your own stem cells, allowing you to regenerate your own tissues and organs without the need for expensive and controversial stem cell therapies, which would cost you tens of thousands of dollars. Imagine reversing your biological age markers by over 12 years, allowing you to extend your lifespan beyond what you thought possible. Imagine regenerating your own heart tissue, reversing the damage caused by a heart attack, and revolutionizing the future of cardiovascular disease treatment. Imagine selectively targeting and destroying cancer cells while leaving healthy cells unharmed, revolutionizing the future of cancer treatment. Imagine in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, recovering from COVID two days faster while also lessening symptoms. All of this has been proven by peptides and so much more. I've created a masterclass consisting of over 40 video modules on peptides, now upgraded to cover 69 of the most beneficial and safe ones out there, with the two new additional being almost entirely unknown, but so powerful because they can boost dopamine and motivation and have restorative effects on almost all organs. You can access it in the link in the description. There is one class of peptides that were founded back in the USSR, known as Covenson's bioregulator peptides. These are natural products that were created for military purposes to give soldiers an edge and slow their rate of aging and disease, enhance their performance and resilience out in the field, and to combat the negative effects of extreme factors. Let me share a story with you. It was 1989, and the Soviet nuclear submarine Komsomolets 
faced a dire situation in the Norwegian Sea when a fire erupted on board. Crew members scrambled to extinguish the flames using whatever they could find, a foam fire extinguisher, sand, and water, but their efforts were in vain. With the situation worsening, the captain was notified over the intercom, who alerted the Soviet Navy and made the decision to surface. As some crew members began to pass away, the others donned their gas masks as they waited for the ship to surface. The hatches were broken open as the crew members got fresh cold air, and they prepared to lower rafts to get off the ship, but there weren't enough rafts for everyone, and the rough seas and fierce winds made escape challenging, with rafts being tossed around violently. Some crew members found themselves struggling to stay afloat in the freezing water and could only hang on to the side. Eventually, rescue arrived, and the remaining 27 survivors were taken to a hospital in several Morsk. They faced disrupted metabolic function, impaired immune systems, with suppressed T lymphocytes, elevated inflammation, and markers of myocardial infarction, MB fraction of creatine phosphokinase. At the hospital, they received orders to treat the survivors with peptides. In this case, the best peptide they had available was thymogen. Thymogen improved physiological functions, metabolism, reduced inflammation, improved the immune system, and reduced the elevated cardiac stress markers. What's shocking is that with modern day research, I have come to find out that thymogen is one of the weaker thymus peptides, yet it was still able to do all that. In my peptide mastery course, I directly compare and contrast all of the thymus peptides for you, to show you which is best for your unique intents and purposes. Covens and peptides have also been used in Afghanistan, the Chernobyl incident in Ukraine, and gas prom workers in Serbia to reduce all-cause mortality, and the elderly to reduce all-cause mortality, and by Olympic athletes such as rhythmic gymnastics coached by Rainer Weiner, who worked directly with Covenson in formulating the best peptides for their use in combination with genetic testing, which is another service I offer in my coaching programs, by the way. These peptides are not banned, since they are considered a food supplement. In some cases, hardcore athletes can have an increased biological age in relation to their chronological age, due to the effects that overtraining can have on the body. However, this was able to be reversed quickly with these peptides. But let's go back in time to when these peptides were first created. It was in the 1960s and 1970s, during the height of the Cold War, that both the Soviet Union and the United States were deeply invested in military prowess. The USSR witnessed America's nuclear tests in action and was concerned about the proximity of US naval and military bases to its borders. In response, they built nuclear submarines and stationed them near the US coastline. However, there was a problem. The crews aboard these submarines had to endure months-long missions, exposing them to high levels of radiation from poorly shielded nuclear reactors. Similar radiation exposure was observed in missile silo operators and supersonic jet pilots, leading to signs of premature aging among the personnel. Even with adequate rest and nutrition, these men were not recovering from the effects of radiation exposure. As a result, the Army Command instructed the medical force to find a solution for complete recovery and to reverse premature aging. The main issues identified were metabolic impairments, stemming from a lack of protein synthesis in cells, which affected various bodily systems, including the immune, endocrine, nervous, cardiovascular, reproductive, and vision systems. Organs were deteriorating and failing. Covenson, who was a colonel at the time, and his partner, Morozov, took up the challenge, supported by the USSR's unlimited resources, as they were also concerned about the potential development of a laser weapon by the United States that could cause blindness and hearing loss. They drew inspiration from the work of Ivan Pavlov, a physiologist who was studying digestive processes in dogs and was awarded a Nobel Prize in 1904 for the physiology of digestion. You may have heard of the phrase Pavlov's dogs, which basically means training people via stimulus and response. When Pavlov rang the bell, the dog's mouth watered. A lot of his work at the time was likely associated with the rule that a peptide called body protection compound played, which is secreted from gastric mucosa. You may have heard of BPC-157, which is a fragment of that. Anyway, fast forward to the work of Professor Covenson, who has claimed in one article that he feels he is the spiritual successor to Pavlov, came up with his own peptides for this, which required a method for extracting them from various organs in cattle aged less than one year old. The gastric peptide complex is known as Stamacort and Chon Lutin as a single tripeptide. Chon Lutin was even shown to provide complete re-epithelialization of gastric ulcers induced by H. pylori infection in 21 days. On the topic of cattle, I see this question come up all the time. People are wondering if prion infections could be a concern with the naturally derived peptides. But these cattle are native to Russia and had no documented cases of prion disease or infectious agents throughout history in their country. The extraction and purification processes followed European Medicines Agency and Pharmacopoeia standards, 
And since the molecular weight is less than 5,000 Daltons, with the exception of cortexin being less than 10,000, prions would not make the cut, since they are much larger. And while we are on this topic, another common question I often see come up is in regards to cerebralizin. Is people referencing one study in which a synthetic CNTF was shown to lead to antibodies in patients who had ALS? But there are a couple things wrong here. First, CNTF is not in cerebralizin. It's too large. And second, ALS patients develop immune reactions to most things. It's a terrible disease. Back to Covenson's bioregulators. These peptides have demonstrated a restorative effect when administered to individuals with premature aging syndrome. The peptides were restoring protein synthesis in the cells, and although they were largely organ-specific, something which most people still claim to this day, I found out that there are nuances to this which make for creating incredibly powerful synergistic combinations that may not be apparent from surface-level research that most people put out. I cover all of this in my Peptide Mastery course, but one good example of this is Chon Luton. It just so happens to exert beneficial effects in the lungs and the stomach. And Pinealon, a peptide I've written about in my blog, backed up by over 100 citations, exerts a lot of beneficial effects on the muscles and boosts endurance performance through stimulating PPARs and irisin, which increase the uptake of glucose into muscle cells and stimulate the utilization of fatty acids, thus improving time ran on a treadmill to exhaustion and preventing the drop-off in performance seen in a control group of wrestlers, even making their hearts more efficient so that they can put out the same power output with 10 to 12 beats per minute lower heart rate. There are a lot of other bioregulator peptides which have crossover effects on different organ systems as well. But how do bioregulator peptides work? Inside every cell in our bodies, we have DNA. This DNA is the written code that controls every biological process occurring in our body. Part of what makes up this code is genes. What activates and deactivates these specific genes? There are a few things. One is the methylation patterns, which are correlated with the aging process. As we age, some CPG sites in the DNA change in a way that reduces the functional activity of our genes. Another factor is controlled by the histone proteins in the cell. These histone proteins wrap our DNA into a structure called chromatin, which then packs it into the nucleus of the cell. However, with aging, a type of chromatin called heterochromatin becomes increased and the structure becomes more tightly packed, making it less functional, leading to certain genes being either repressed or silenced. On the other hand, Deheterochromatization involves reducing the heterochromatization, which unlocks these genes once again, contributing to the rejuvenation of cells and tissues, working more like it was when we were younger. So what happens when we take bioregulator peptides? Two things. This peptide enters the cell and forms a bond with a specific type of histone protein. This bond influences the chromatin structure in a positive manner. Many of these peptides can result in deheterochromatization and enhance the expression of genes that are losing their activity and stimulating genes that have been silenced as a result of the aging process, therefore having a positive effect on the cells. But these bioregulator peptides can also stimulate certain gene expressions directly by directly binding to the genes in the DNA code and promoter regions. That is a region which affects the gene expressions either up or down, but usually up, depending on the current state of the body and its needs. Eventually, the peptide bond is cleaved by peptidase, breaking down the peptide into individual amino acids, which are then utilized by the cell for other processes. So there are many types of these bioregulator peptides, and they exert semi-permanent effects, since their use can cause lasting changes in the way that chromatin influences DNA. This means once you stop taking them, you're still enhanced for a period of time. How long? Well, we don't know exactly, but what we have seen in human studies is the reversal of biological age. The most accurate method for measuring the age of our DNA now is the Horvath clock and the Dune and Pace methylation test. This has been Brennan Henry, the world's leading expert on peptide science, and I hope you enjoyed this brief rundown of peptides with a focus on Covington's bioregulator peptides. In my peptide mastery course, I cover all 40 of the Covington's peptides, but additionally cover 29 non covington's peptides and how to best use them and dose them for your specific needs and desires. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the course and answering any questions you have on priority.